Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year! This is my first video of 2019 and today we will be reviewing the Becky G collection with Colourpop Cosmetics. Before we even get started with the video, I just want to throw a disclaimer out there that a lot of the shade names in here are in Spanish and I do not speak Spanish. I've never learned it. So I'm bound to mispronounce some shade names and stuff like that. Just know that I'm not purposely trying to. I did try to like Google translate some of them so I could hear it and say it back but it's a little bit hard to get the like accent right. But anyway, I'm going to be sharing with you my thoughts on the collection and I'll be showing you three demos with the palette as always and just give you guys some comparisons and stuff like that. So if you guys are interested, then just continue watching. So you can get this whole collection for 58 US dollars and in the collection you will get the Savile Hair palette. This is 18 US dollars if you do want to get it separately and the reason why it's 18 dollars instead of 16 is because there is a mirror. So usually when there's a mirror inside it's like an extra two dollars. She also came out with a lip bundle for 29 US dollars. I believe you can get them individually as well which on the top of my head is 650 US dollars each. In the bundle you will get five ultra formulas, two of them being ultra satin and three of them being ultra matte. And then lastly in her collection there are two loose highlighters that I didn't pick up just because they seemed very dark and when I see that a highlighter is a little bit too dark for my skin tone I typically just don't buy it anyway because I won't even end up using it and I don't like using loose highlighters. I knew I'd just be wasting my money on that so I didn't pick it up so I just got the eyeshadow palette and the lip bundle. So yeah let's just jump straight in to my review. Let's first talk about the eyeshadow palette because obviously that is the most exciting thing to me as always. I really like the packaging on her collection. I'm actually really inspired by it. I started bullet journaling and I think I'm going to do like a whole month inspired by the pattern of this collection. I just think it's so cute. But anyway, talking about the actual eyeshadows, you will get eight mattes in here and four shimmer shadows, which to me is a very good variety of finishes. So first impressions when I saw this, initially I was like, this is a really beautiful palette, but already looking Looking at the palette, I knew a lot of these shades are very dupable. Nothing really screamed out to me. I feel like everything in this palette we've seen before, there's not even one shadow that in here that I find unique. I think as of lately, there's a lot of palettes that have a lot of teals. So the pop of colors in here, I feel like are almost normal to me at this point. Maybe I just reviewed so many eyeshadow palettes, but I don't know. I feel like more recently, there are a lot of teals, a lot of blues. So already looking at this palette, I felt like I could do a lot of the looks with other palettes. So to me, if you have the Dream Street double entendre, give it to me straight, and maybe like I think I love you. A lot of the shades in here you can dip it within those four palettes. You already know how much I love the formula, so I'm really just gonna talk about the shade range and the looks that you can create. I think the looks that I created with this palette, I truly love. They are looks that I would wear all the time. Very, very easy to do. But in saying that, I feel like all of three looks I could have created with any other ColourPop palette that I already have, especially Dream Street. If you can just see, that there are a lot of crossovers, they are just placed in different spots. You get a lot of pops of blues, a lot of reds, and also a lot of rose gold transition shades. So I feel like there is a huge crossover with this palette. Although I feel like it is very similar to Dream Street, I'm not saying this palette is bad at all. You will create some stunning, stunning looks, but I do feel like it is just so stunning standard at this point. There is nothing so special about this palette. If you love Becky and you want to support her and you want to get this collection, go ahead and do it. You won't be disappointed with the products. I think the shade range and everything here is beautiful, but I think it is just very, very easy to dupe at this point. If you wanted to ask if I would choose the Dream Street or the Savelle hair, I probably would go for Dream Street. But that is honestly just personal preference. I prefer more of a brighter red. I like the rose golds in here and just something about Dream Street I just like a little bit more than Savelle hair. So it's really up to you and what you have in your collection. To me, I probably could have done without this palette but because like, I'm a Colourpop collector, I just had to have it. But if you're not a makeup collector and you're out on the budget, I personally feel like you could do without this one. And next we will talk about the lip bundle which again has two satins and two ultra mattes. I actually think the lip bundle is more of the style of the show than the eyeshadow palette. I think these lip colors are absolutely stunning. Something so special about these shades is that I can see this 
literally on everyone. These kind of tones and colors will look good on any skin tone. If you're very fair, a light tan, golden tan, deep dark. I feel like these lip colors you can definitely see on everyone and I think Becky did a really good job in choosing these shades. It's all up to your personal preference, what kind of shades you like on yourself and also if you do like the ultra satin or the ultra matte formula. So I'm just gonna like just swatch one by one, tell you my thoughts on each shade and tell you my favorites. The first shade we have is Mija which is more of like the pinky neutral. I guess it would be the most wearable shade nice pinky almost neutral everyday color we next have chola which is the darkest one out of all of them this one actually kind of reminds me of chocolatier from the brown sugar collection but i swatched them side by side they're actually very different this one is a very dark almost burgundy brown next we have is floor which is one of my favorites it is almost kind of like gallop if you guys are familiar with the luxe lipstick but it's just like a really pretty burnt terracotta shade is the best way i can describe it but this is one of the standout shades in my opinion these are the kind of shades that i really really like and the one that i'm wearing right now is secreto secreto um, but this one is kind of like Mija, like a warmer version of it. It's very orangey, very warm, but it has a little bit of dustiness to it. And then lastly, we have Besame, which is just the red in the collection. To me, I feel like this is the one you maybe can do without. If you have Ariba, maybe you don't need this one. I feel like a lot of reds do look very similar to each other. The only way they can look very different is if their underbase is drastically different. But this one comparing to Ariba is actually not too far off in my opinion. So I feel like this is the only one in my opinion that you could kind of rethink if you have a red very similar to this. If I had to pick my favorites, I would pick Mija, Secreto, which is the one I'm wearing right now, and Floor. These are just the most wearable ones, the ones I see myself reaching for the most. I'm not saying the other two aren't nice, but these are just like more of like the everyday shades that I would wear typically. So yeah, with that being said, I feel like everything in this collection is just really up to you. Everything is almost quite standard. Nothing really stands out to me. If I had to recommend something to you guys, I would definitely recommend the lip bundle. You're getting five lip colors for 29 US dollars, which I personally feel like it's a great deal. And if you are saving money that way, getting all five for $29, I would just say get the bundle like that if you do like the formulas. Because if you like the formulas, you'll definitely like the lip shades. So yeah, I think it's just really up to you. I guess my three recommendations were just the lip colors that I just mentioned but anyway we can now move on to the dupes and you guys can see the three looks that I created with this eyeshadow palette So jumping straight into the first look, I'm going to be starting off with the shade Luna on my Makeup Collective number 16 brush. And I'm just going to use this shade just to set down my concealer, which acts as my eye base. Again, like I always say, setting your concealer down is always up to you. It's definitely not a necessary step. There's always different ways that you can use a matte white powder, and I'll definitely show you guys that throughout the three demos. 
Next up, using the shade Caramello on my ColourPop Tapered Blending Brush. This is going to be our transition shade and I'm just going to look down straight into my mirror using windshield wiping motions just to get that blend out. Next, taking the shade Sangria on my Morphe M433 brush and this is going to go right in that outer corner of our eye. First, just adding that red pigment into the outer portion and then I'll slowly bring that towards the inner corner of my crease. But now I'll be taking the shade Malbec on my Sigma E25 brush and we're going to be doing exactly the same kind of motion. Putting that right in the outer corner first and then bring it towards the inner crease. But this shade is just like a touch darker and a little bit more of a darker burgundy brown. And this is slowly just going to make the outer corners a little bit more deep. And when you work in shades that are just a touch darker and you work in those baby steps, you are going to get a really seamless blend. So I'm just putting that right in the outer corner first and blend it towards the inner crease. And now I'll be using the shade Cafecito on my ColourPop E9 brush. And no explanation here, exactly doing the same thing, but working a little bit lower, closer towards my lash line. And also you can see my brush is super, super tiny. We are just using darker shadows with smaller brushes and placing it a little bit lower towards my lash line. And now taking the shade Salosa on my Sigma E55 brush, I'm going to be using this shadow wet. So we're going to place that right in the inner corner of our eye. This is a really beautiful burgundy red, like with an orange base to it. I love these kind of shadows. Around my crease, I'm really not going to define it like I would with a cut crease. I'm just really going to pat it out and make it very diffused. And now going back into the shade Malbec on my Sigma E20 brush, I'm going to run this shadow all over my bottom lash line, keeping it really tight underneath that waterline and going to connect those shadows at the outer corner. And now I'm just taking my Odyssey in Smooth Rise Supercharged Eyeliner in the shade Coffee and I'm going to be using this in my bottom waterline. And I'm going to use this to highlight my brow bone and also my inner corners. Alright guys, so that is pretty much it for the eyeshadows. I'm going to go off camera to finish off my face, put on my wing liner and also my lashes. And then I will be right back to show you guys the lip colors with this look. And then lastly, the final look. Okay guys, so this is the first look completed for my lashes. I am wearing the Boudoir Lights from House of Lashes. And for my final lip pairing, I decided to go with the Ultra Satin Lip in the collection in the shade Mija. Jumping straight into the second look, we're going to be doing something very natural but very smoky at the same time. We aren't using lashes in this one, so this is kind of like my take on a smoky natural look. Very easy to do, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm first going to take the shade Luna on my Makeup Collective in number 16 brush. And once again, I'm just going to dust this all over my lid space just to set down my concealer which acts as my eye base. I'm going to show you another way how you can use Luna later on, but we're going to still be using this to sit down our lid. Next, we're going to take the shade Caramello on my Sigma E25 brush. Now, first, just going to pack this shadow all over my lid. This is where I want the most color payoff to be. I'm going to focus it closer to my lash line more. And then once I feel like most of the product is off my brush, I'm going to slowly bring that towards my crease area. 
Now I'll be taking the shade Cafecito on my Makeup Collective number no. 5 brush and I'm gonna use this right at my lash line. Like once again, just focusing all of that darkness around the lash line, just really smoking it out. And once you feel like you have no product left on your brush, that's when you can start blending it towards the shade Caramello. Where the lash line is, is where you want it to be the most darkest. Using the same brush and same shade, I'm gonna bring that on my lower lash line, just right at the outer corner, really putting it under my waterline. Now taking my Sigma E20 brush, I'm gonna use the same shade Cafecito and just connect at the outer corner, the lower lash and the upper lash. Now going back into the shade Luna, I'm taking my ColourPop large shader brush. So now I'm just going to put this right at the inner corner of my eye, kind of into my inner corner as well. This is just really going to brighten up the eyes a little bit, make the eyes appear a bit more open, a little bit more wide awake. I'm just going to keep this look all matte. So usually I would apply like a light gold shimmer shadow here. I guess it's a little bit more wearable, it's a little bit more subtle for daytime. So this is another way that you can use a Luna. You can put that in the inner corner, you can highlight your brow bone with it. And lastly, I'll be taking my ColourPop Creme Gel Liner in the shade Honey Dude and I'm going to use this in my bottom lash line just to really brighten up the look once again. But yeah, that is pretty much it for the eye look. It is very, very simple. We just use three shadows. I just think it's a really quick and easy way to do your eyes. Also great for work, not too loud in your face, you know what I mean? So I'm just going to go off camera, I'm going to tight line, and I'm also going to apply some mascara, and then I'll be back to show you guys all the lip colors. So this is the final look completed for look number two. For the final lip pairing, I decided to go with the Ultra Matte Lip in the shade Besame. You guys always request for more natural looks, looks without lashes, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Okay, jumping straight in to look number three, we're first going to start off with the shade Luna once again on my Makeup Collective number 16 brush and I'm just going to use the shadow all over my lip space up to my brow bone to set down my concealer which acts as my eye base. Now taking the shade Lola on my ColourPop Tapered Blending Brush, this is going to be our transition shade. I'm just going to put that straight into my crease using windshield wiping motions, making sure I'm getting that product right in that inner crease area. Since we are creating a half cut crease, as always, you want some definition there. Now using the shade Sangria on my Morphe M433 brush, I'm first going to apply that to the outer corner of my eye just using circular motions to get the most pigment there. And then once I'm happy with that pigment and there's not too much product left on my brush, I'm going to slowly bring that towards the inner part of my crease. Next, taking the shade Cafecito on my ColourPop E9 brush. Again, doing exactly the same thing, but just focusing it a little bit lower into the crease and a little bit closer to the lash line. Now I'm just taking some concealer on the back of my hand using my Vanity Planet Small Cream Shadow Brush. I'm going to start placing that right in the inner third of my lid space. And then I'll slowly bring it towards my crease, really shaping it out. And I'm just switching to a small paintbrush just to really define that cut crease line. 
Then just taking the shade Corona on my Makeup Collective number 18 brush using this shadow wet, we're going to place that right on top of that concealer. As always, I like to switch to a smaller brush just to do more of that detail work, getting really up close to that crease line. I'm using the Makeup Collective number 4 brush. Just going back in with the shade Sangria on my Morphe M433 brush, I'm going to use the shadow just to blend the metallic and the mattes together kind of where they meet so that there is no harsh line. And I'm just patting over that region just to give that perfect blend. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly go off camera, clean everything up, do my wing liner, pop on my lashes, and then we'll come back and do the lower lash line. Now I'll be taking the shade Serena on my Sigma E55 brush, and this is going to go on our lower lash line, just smoking it from outer to inner corner. And then I'll be taking the shade Vibra on my Makeup Collective number 7 brush. I'm going to push this up against my lower lash line and slowly start creating that gradient. Taking the shade Australia, I'm going to use this to highlight my brow bone and also my inner corners. And lastly, just taking my ColourPop Cream Gel Liner in the shade Fast Lane, I'm going to put this in my bottom waterline. So that is pretty much all of the eyeshadows done. I'm going to go off camera, finish off my face, and then I'll be back to show you guys all of the lip colors. Alright guys, so this is the final look completed. For my lashes, I am wearing the Boudoir Lights from House of Lashes. And for my final lip pairing, I decided to go with the Ultra Matte Lip in the shade Secreto. I actually really like how it turned out. I like the blue contrast against the red. I think everything is, it just looks really good together. And I think this eye look really showcases the palette really well. Alright guys, this is going to conclude my video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it and we are starting off the new year with another ColourPop review. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Comment down below what you think of this collection, if you picked anything up. Are you going to pick anything up? Be sure to let me know down below so we can start chatting. And yeah, that is pretty much it for today's video. I hope you guys are having a great new year so far. But with that being said, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!